Hi, this is John from Horsepower Freaks. Today I'm going to show you how to install our 335-135 catch can kit. Um, first off, I'll go over a, a uh, basic set of tools that you'll need. You'll need a 10 millimeter socket and wrench, a 8 millimeter socket and wrench or nut driver, long screwdriver, short screwdriver, um, large crescent wrench. Um, we have a dash 10 um, fitting wrench but if you don't have that, you can use just another uh, crescent wrench that will work as well. A uh, five millimeter Allen and a three millimeter Allen. So first what we'll do is we'll remove the cowl on the, on the uh, engine bay. What you'll need to do is remove the sensors on both sides and then remove these two covers. Now I'll go ahead and do that now. So as you can see, I have the two sensors on both sides just laying here on the fenders. They're removed from the cowl. Now these two, covers here, there's two latches, one on the back and one on the front. You can grab either one and just pull up on it and you can feel it pop open, just like that. Grab the front one and that will come off. Do the same on the other side. Once again, you'll hear it pop open in the front one. That'll come off. Now, the next step is to remove the filter assembly. There are six 8 millimeter fasteners, two here, two on the opposite side, and two in the front. That'll need to be removed. Okay, the next step after you have the air filter assembly moved, removed is to pull off this electrical carrier here. All you simply do is grab it from behind and give it slight pressure forward towards the front of the car, and it will pop out just like that. Behind it, there's another electrical carrier. This one's a little bit more difficult to remove. You'll need a long screwdriver. And you'll see here that there's small cutouts at the very tops of these connectors. So all you do is you insert the screwdriver in there and gently pry downwards. It may take a few tries. They're a little bit fussy. There's one. The third one's already removed, previously broken from the owner. There's the second one. Pull those away, and the next step will be to use your 8 millimeter fastener remover. And there are two 8 millimeter nuts here and here. And after those two are removed, this entire cowl piece will come out. Good. With the cowl removed, the next piece to remove is the engine cover. You use a 5 millimeter um, Allen wrench and remove the three fasteners that hold the, the engine cover on. Lift up on the cover and it should slide out of the front of the vehicle. Just like that. So now with the engine cover removed, the next step is to assemble and install the can. You'll notice that there are four fasteners here, four bolts, and they look really similar. But you'll want to use the countersunk ones, these ones, and not the button heads. These will be used later on. So you take the two countersunk fasteners and attach the bracket on the back of the can. It only goes on one way. You can't put it on any other way. It's your three millimeter nut driver. Let's install the bracket on the back of the can. Now be, be sure to install the bracket downwards as shown here. Don't install it upside down. those down. Another thing you'll want to do with this step 
is to disassemble the can and ensure the components inside are tight. This is not your regular can. It does have a condenser on the inside of it. So you unscrew the can out of there. And this is your condenser unit. I'm just going to pull it out to show you what's inside. All the flow out of the valve cover through the can goes through this condensing unit here, which actually will pull the oil and moisture vapor out of the air charge and condense it so it drips into the bottom of the can. A lot of cans, they don't have that. So just the velocity of the um, blow-by going through the can, it'll travel straight through the can and through the tube into the intake system. All right. So now that the can's assembled, what we want to do is prepare the engine bay for the can. Your windshield wiper fluid reservoir will need to come off. You'll see there's a little tab right here. Just pull that tab towards the cap itself and lift up, and this will come off. There's two fasteners that we use. We don't just use one fastener, we use two. This grounding post right here, and this fastener here that holds this heat shield. The kit supplies two thinner fasteners. So you want to remove both of those fasteners from the vehicle. So with the two fasteners removed from the um, strut tower, what you want to do is install the catch can using these two fasteners that we supply here. You'll see that they're a lot thinner than the factory ones because we have to compensate for the thickness of the bracket. So pretty straightforward, just slide it in there and install the fasteners. Now a note, this is a grounding point for this ground here. You want to make sure that this stays on there. Depending on how small your hands are and what kind of tools you use, you will either be able to leave the can assembled or you'll have to take it apart. But if you get the can in here and you realize that you cannot get your hands in here or tools, it's pretty simple. Just unscrew the can. And pull the bottom of it out. It's just that simple to dump it out as well. With the bracket and the can assembly installed firmly, just reattach the windshield wiper reservoir fill cap and reassemble the catch can. So with the catch can installed, the next thing you do is install the lines. Yeah. First, what you want to do is detach the factory tube from the elbow that goes into the intake system. So you just merely squeeze these two sides here, and it should pop off. Sometimes these get a little worn, and they don't want to pop off the way you want, so you will have to physically pry the sides open. And it looks like this one's already been broken, so that's what we'll have to do. So as you can see, the tube is now disconnected. The next step is to remove the elbow. Remove this sensor plug here. 
by pulling on this tab and pulling the sensor pl plug out. And so, and to remove the actual elbow, there's a clip on this side and a clip on the opposite side. Yeah. Some of you may be able to do it with your hands. Others may need to use a screwdriver. But basically, I'll show you on this side. It's hard to do it on the other side because you're blind to it. Basically, you install the screwdriver and turn it slightly, and you can see the clip expand, just like that. And you just pull the elbow out of the tube. So, so this is the fitting here that was removed from the intake elbow. Um, the next thing to do is install our, our adapters. Now this is what sets our kit apart from some of the others. We supply these two adapters here that are direct fit. There will be no modification necessary to any factory part of the vehicle. I'll show you this one first. This is the one that snaps directly into the factory line that's on the vehicle currently. So first, before you snap this one into the vehicle, and just to show you the difference, this one here has a few fastener holes in it here and an o-ring. This one does not. This one just has a tapered edge here. Take this one and install it onto the 150 degree fitting on the line. Only one line contains this fitting so you won't be able to get it mixed up. Tighten it down with your crescent wrenches or crescent wrench and, and fitting wrench. They don't have to be extremely tight. Just be careful they don't get scratched. snug is all you need just like that this right in here this is the factory hose that's it right there okay the next step is to install this fitting here the other one with the o-ring on it into the elbow that comes out of the vehicle. Now you notice that one side of the elbow is not round and one side is. This fitting will slide into the round side. But before we do that, we need to install the hose onto it. The same as in the previous step with the other hose. Use your two wrenches, tighten them down. They don't need to be extremely tight, just snug. Just like that. Okay, so now with the hose installed. Now the hose is it's a predetermined length with straights on either side, so it doesn't matter which way you put it on. So after the hose is installed, what we need to do is lightly grease the O-ring. And I'm using a high temp multi-purpose grease here. Just very lightly, it doesn't need to be gobbed on. As you can see, it's super, super light coat. Next, we'll take this, slide it into the fitting. And you'll notice that the O-ring will go in a certain amount and then want to stop, just like that there. It's because in here, there's a step, and we set it up so the O-ring fits nice and tight. So it'll go in there and stop on the first one, and just give it a twist and push it a little bit further, and it'll slide in just like that. You can twist it back and forth too, just to, just to make sure it's free and not binded. But then the next step after this is to take this lock ring that we've done here, and all this lock ring does is ensure that this fitting doesn't pop out. As you can see, it's made to fit around this fitting, this plastic one, perfectly. So as you can see, it fits around there and it stops right here on this little lip. And what that'll do is prevent this from popping off. Use the two supplied button head fasteners and install the lock ring. With a three mil Allen. Snug those down. The next step would be to install this into the vehicle. Now, what I like to do is in install another light coat of grease on this factory O-ring here, just very lightly. Just helps the ease of installation. Now with the line assemble and the O-ring lightly greased, this elbow here simply snaps back into the intake. Move this out of the way. As you can see, I'll position this down in there as it was. And just slightly push. There we have it. And install the electrical connector once again. There it is. 
Now, this hose that we just installed will go to the lower fitting on the catch can. Now, you can route the hose however you want, but I generally like to route this particular hose under the electrical carriers, like so. And attach it to the can. Now with your AN fitting wrench, or your crescent wrench, just lightly, lightly tighten it, just barely, just like that. Doesn't need to be extremely tight. Now this hose with the 150 degree fitting on it will have to be flipped over. Because I left it sitting like this, you'll flip it over so that the fitting points towards the firewall. As so. fitting will come around and come to the top of the can. Now I like to run this line over the electrical carriers. And this, this top fitting here swivels, so you can turn it all the way around, position it as you need. But the top fitting attaches just as so. And once again with your wrench, just lightly tighten it. Now the next steps is to just reassemble the vehicle, reinstall the valve cover as it came off, and reinstall the cowl and air filter assemblies as it came off, and uh, your installation is complete.